Hello yeah, YouTube. So, won't be too long, huh? Anyway, I tried this once already and it didn't work. You know, reviewing boots is actually really difficult. So, let's see if I can get it right this time. Because last time I went on this wild tangent about film. Do that some other time. Today, I'm here to review... Nightwatch, aka Nochna Doza by Sergei Lukinenko. Because I recently got the fifth in the trilogy. Let's go with it. And I thought this would be a good place to start because it's also a series that has influenced my own writing immensely so. Although the film has actually had a greater influence, which is why I went off on the tangent about it the first time I tried to record this. In brief, um, Nightwatch is about people called Others, who are basically all kinds of supernatural beings, which includes werewolves and vampires and stuff like that. But the majority of it focuses on more normal Others, I suppose you could say, which are mostly magicians, which is that kind of thing. The series as a whole primarily follows the exploits of a chap called Anton Golodetsky who is quite different in the novels than he is in the films. The films are much darker. These are actually... actually surprisingly childlike and idealistic in a lot of ways. Um, which shows through in some of the writing, actually. Although, that's, that's one of the things about this. You see, being a Russian novel, I can't read Cyrillic. So I got the translated version, which was translated by a trap called Andrew Bromfield who, to the best of my knowledge, has translated the entire series so far. At least that's what it says in all the editions I have. However, I've read some of his, some of his other translations as well. I'll come more on that in a future video. And I can say that the, the stylistic differences between the two are quite distinct, which makes me think that, um, as good as Andrew Bonfield may be as a translator, the majority of the actual syntax, the style, does firmly come from the authors themselves. So in this case, as I said, they're surprisingly childlike. Not childish, but childlike. There are, there are little points where being primarily written in the first person, some of it's written in third person, but it's primarily written from the point of view of Gardetsky himself, who uses I, and he'll make little comments um, about things that others can do like the ability to cast a, a spell of disinterest on his car so that um, people won't try and steal it or try and take his parking spot or whatever and he'll, he'll, he'll say it like he'll it, just make it as a comment as though all others are capable of doing this and whereas in some writing that might come across as being you know a very lazy easy you know, just just go with it sort of thing. It, it works. It does feel a lot more like somebody just making a throwaway statement. Just trying to explain something to you without going into details. Just give you a, a quick and dirty, this is why this happens sort of thing. Which is why I'm saying... I do think that that comes more, a lot more from Ukinenko than from the way Bromfield writes it. And it makes it an interesting read in the sense of it's there's so much in there that's explained very quickly, very succinctly, and really gets the point across without ever sounding patronizing or without sounding like an easy explanation. What's the word I'm looking for? You know, when the, when somebody says something and it sounds like um, like a MacGuffin. Uh, a really plot convenience, you know, contrivance. It doesn't ever come across that way. It just feels like something that's genuine. It's like this is what happens. We don't really need to. Um, uh, we don't really need to explain it in any more detail than that. As for the rest of it, it is still quite a dark series, uh, especially some of the later ones when it starts dealing with vampires. But even this one has its moments when we find out that the machinations going on between the two watches, the night watch who work in the evening to watch over the dark ones, uh, and the day watch who work during the day to watch over the, the light ones. It's a little bit confusing, I know, because the dark ones do most of their, their work at night, hence the name, and the light ones do most of their work during the day. So, 
the night watch is actually awake through the night mostly to keep track of the yeah so when do they sleep is kind of the impression you get but he's not quite sure for it. anyway there's a basically what happened is several centuries and undeterminate amount of time ago there was a truce written up between them saying that the light ones would never try and make the world a better place on a global scale and that the the dark ones wouldn't try and make the world a worse place on a grand scale because that would upset the balance humanity regular people have to find their own way so it's all about very subtle plots that spin out not just throughout the whole of the novels with a lot of the things you'll you'll make you'll harken back to it in later novels harken back to things that happened in this novel and earlier and say that it's still relevant to what's happening at the time and again that's something that never feels like it's just him saying oh remember this it does really feel like you're reading through them you can see so much set up for things that could and will happen later and one of the things that really strikes you about it is that the the light ones are not good people and the dark ones are not bad people they're just people they have abilities beyond that of the normal man but they are still just people they have their own goals and ideals and hopes and dreams and plans dark ones can be altruistic and they do genuinely fervently believe that people should be allowed to do for themselves whereas the light ones are for lack of a better term communists in a very real sense the ideal of communism as opposed to the actuality of it which makes sense considering it's it's Russia it's, but it's a modern day Russian epic that draws heavily on ancient um, Russian mythology which I don't know a great deal about so I can't really comment on that but they do also go to other countries as well which gives you an idea of how it all ties together and that's the great thing about the this idea of others because they're not any one particular type of supernatural being they're just others they have abilities that allow them to do different things like one of the most um, part, uh, one of the most important ones being that they can go into this other dimension called the twilight that has multiple layers to it as far as we know in the novels we've now reached the final level of the twilight but he has throughout the series always shown that there are more with the, the closest level to us being the one that's the most similar and different it's all black and white very gloomy and um, it's kind of like an echo of our world the next one starts bringing a little bit of color into it but also becomes more lifeless and gives you more the ghost of an impression and the next one is even less lifeless still to the point of being dead but the one after that actually starts to become more lifelike until you get to the final layer which is almost identical to our world and it's actually the closest physically to it it's just the hardest to reach a lot of symbolism goes on in there the whole thing is very symbolic about it's a lot of social social commentary about politics and the essence of what is good and what is bad and it's always very murky as the twilight would suggest it's all about life it's not about being a good person or being a bad person or being a good and a bad person it's just about trying to make the most of the world around you trying to do what you can a saying i like to to go back to is we do what we must because we must and that's pretty much what it comes down to it and it really it really is a fantastic series and this one is not the best in the series I'd say but there are very few series that start off this strong when it says on the cover it's JK Rowling Russian style and it was an inevitable um, analogy to make but they're nothing alike only very superficially in the fact that they deal with magic very broadly but where Harry Potter is like wands and brooms and all that sort of nonsense this is much similar actually to the um, White Wolf series Mage of the Ascension where magic just comes from the world around us they actually literally it makes it very clear especially in this one um, that 
when a light one tries to do good things, they actually end up creating more evil in the process because they take happiness away from people. That's what they draw their power from, is the, the essence of goodness. Whereas, ironically, when a dark one does something evil, they actually make the world better because they take all the hatred out of people. So that person who was, who was on the brink of beating his wife, they might draw it from him and he might suddenly change his ways and realize that he's going down a dark path and bring her flowers and make her a nice meal and try to put his life right. So it really helps bring across the, the true weight of what you're actually doing. It's like being given all the powers of the universe and knowing that you can never use them without fucking everything up completely. So although it still has that childish idealism, childlike idealism that they want to do and they're still trying to find a way to do it, it's knowing that at every turn they're doomed to failure. That's what makes it so powerful. They know. It's not just hinted at. They know. They can't make the world a better place, but they still want to do it anyway. And I don't think I can say anything more after that. That's the best way I could end this is by saying this is idealism in its purest form. And it's a fantastic series of novels. I will be reviewing Sign of the Cross by Chris Kuzineski, which was not my original plan, but there's a lot in here I want to talk about. Hopefully I'll do it better than I did this time. This is my first time around doing this, and it's ended up being a lot more difficult, as I already said, than I first anticipated. But at least I've done it this time. But until then, until next month, thank you for watching.